thank you very much, Anne, and first, not only for your kind words, but above all for yours and the Lisbon Council determination and commitment to this agenda. You also, also have always kept the line in t when others had doubts. I know that Lisbon Council had never doubt about the imperative need of reforms in union and uh, the strong support we have given to this agenda is indeed extremely important for us as well. It is a great pleasure, ladies and gentlemen, to be here with you today at this Lisbon Council's Europe 2020 Summit. Uh, as you know, I have to attend lots of summits these days, uh, including some that stretch through into the night. The last one was until 2.30 a.m. Uh, and the prospect of attending one today exclusively devoted to Europe 2020 is a very good opportunity for me to make a forceful case for it. It's a challenge time for Europe and also for the Commission. We are still fighting the worst financial crisis crisis since there is European integration and uh, we are fighting also its consequences in the Eurozone in particular. We have been at the forefront of developing a collective European response to the crisis and there is still much to do. As we know, we are between two crucial European Council meetings that aim to reach agreement among European Union heads of state and government on a comprehensive response to the financial crisis as well as on strengthens economic governance. We urgently need to draw a line under this crisis and build a strong, sustainable recovery in Europe. We need banks that are able to lend and governments that are able to borrow. Companies that are willing to invest and consumers who are willing to spend. Bold reforms at the national level and enhanced cooperation and governance at European level. I am confident we'll succeed. The crisis has given added urgency to the need for Europe to reform. A year ago, we set out our ambitious goals for the European Union in the coming decade and laid them out in the Europe 2020 strategy. Since then, we have translated those objectives into more focused initiatives and specific blueprints. Our aim is simple, good jobs, higher living standards, a better quality of life for all Europeans. We need smart, sustainable, inclusive growth, and to help deliver it, we have presented seven flagship 2020 initiatives, most recently our plans for a resource-efficient Europe that we launched in January. The stakes could not be higher. The world around us is changing fast. Europe needs to change too, if it is not to be left behind. China now exports more in six hours than it did in a whole year in 78. More in six hours than in a whole year in 78. India has become the world's biggest exporter of IT services. For the first time since the Industrial Revolution, over half of global economic activity now takes place outside the so-called West. Europe cannot afford to be complacent. We need to finally deliver on the reforms we have pledged to do. That is what our citizens and businesses demand from Europe, and that's what I demand from the European institutions, including the Commission, that I have the privilege to lead. That's also what I demand from our member states, because at the end, they have, of course, to agree. Sometimes it takes time, but at the end, they agree. I realize that many people dismiss Europe 2020 as another Lisbon strategy, which failed to deliver on its promise to make Europe the most dynamic and competitive region in the world. But believe me, Europe 2020 is in many ways different because we have <coughs> learned, I believe, with some of the shortcomings, keeping, of course, the important ambition. Now we have clear targets. We have the seven flagship initiatives. We have a strengthened governance structure, including the European semester. And above all, we have a new awareness that we can no longer duck difficult decisions. Now we have this understanding among our member states that, in fact, we had not when there was the Lisbon strategy about the need to reinforce economic governance at European level. Probably afterwards in the debate I can come to this. Just now, we just received the news some minutes ago, the Council agreed unanimously on our seven proposals for economic governance. The proposal that the Commission put forward. You remember there was a debate if the Commission should or not put them forward. We have put, and just now I received information that the Council has agreed on this proposal, so I hope the <laughs> Parliament will follow. And and I think, in fact, the final output will be even better than the consensus reached uh, some time ago among member states. Europe 2020 
uh, shies away from overambitious claims and unrealistic deadlines, uh, puts forward demanding but achievable goals. And I think this test of credibility is extremely important. It involves a new implementation mechanism embedded in a comprehensive integrated approach. Member states now commit to structural reforms in a concrete macroeconomic and fiscal context and in the framework, I insist, of strengthens economic governance for the euro area and for the European Union as a whole. And last but not least, the importance and relevance of Europe 2020 are now acknowledged by all member states. We definitely need their ownership and that of their parliaments and the national stakeholders to move forward with urgency. Some analysts, as you know, and probably some are here, uh, fear that Europe could suffer a lost or grim decade. It is our collective responsibility to make the next years much brighter. The latest forecast for 2011 is better than expected, and it is evident that it is easier to adopt and implement circular reforms when there is tangible growth. Healthy economic growth is also a precondition for preserving and creating jobs across the Union, and this in turn helps launch and execute sustainable reforms. For its part, the annual growth survey that the Commission adopted earlier this year clearly articulates 10 actions for urgent action over the next 12 months, all anchored in Europe 2020. They are intended to promote fiscal consolidation, correct macroeconomic imbalances, and ensure financial stability, all prerequisites for sound growth. But they also aim to mobilize labor markets, create job opportunities, tap the potential of the single market, attract private capital, and facilitate cost-effective access to energy. Our overarching task is to prevent a vicious cycle of unsustainable debt, financial market disruption, low economic growth. In addition, we'll soon put forward initiatives under the Single Market Act and set out by 2012 a number of growth enhancing measures. I expect the proposal that we call the Single Market Act to be presented next month. And from June onwards, we'll start a challenging debate on the next multi-annual financial perspectives, that is, on the resources needed to achieve our goals defined in the Europe 2020 strategy and on the value added of action at European level. In fact, I can already tell you, even if the proposal is not yet presented, that there is now a consensus in the college that, of course, the multi-financial perspectives should reflect to a large extent the priorities, of course, set by the Europe 2020. In a way, it's uh, the most important instrument from a budgetary point of view to achieve those, those goals. Where does the new pact for the euro agreed by the heads of state and governments last Friday fit into all of this? The pact makes a clear reference to Europe 2020 and elevates to the highest political level a set of concrete measures from our strategy in order to ensure their immediate implementation. And it reflects the priority actions that we identified in annual growth survey earlier in January. Competitiveness is an essential element for our economies. An economy must be competitive to grow. It must grow to create jobs. And my priority is and always has been growth and jobs, which lie at the heart of Europe 2020 strategy. In line with Europe 2020, the pact also acknowledges that while budgetary consolidation and structural reforms are essential for competitiveness, investment in the industries of the future notably through research and innovation, are also vital. And it also recognizes the Commission's work on taxation and financial regulation. And indeed, it puts, as in its own words, the Commission at the, central of this, at the center of these efforts. I believe the pact will also constitute a significant push towards fair and sustainable growth in Europe. Next month, participating member states are expected to translate the key areas of the pact and the priorities put forward in the annual growth survey into their national reform programs, their stability and convergence programs. So it was, in fact, very important what we have agreed last Friday. Because as you know, there was some controversy, to be frank, about the pact, how it came, what was the idea, and uh, there was a risk or a perceived risk, in fact, the real risk of having the pact outside of the European governance, uh, creating duplication and structures and undermining the so-called community approach or the community method, but now it is clear that it will be, in fact, a way of 
of reinforcing the existing mechanisms of governance, some of them uh, still the mechanisms of governance we are now completing. And this is extremely important, putting at the center of the efforts precisely the Commission, the Commission and the other institutions, but recognizing, of course, a very special role uh, for the Commission. So my message we are, uh, is very clear, we are on the right track. To paraphrase Jacques Delors, the fire brigade of 2010 is being taken over by the architects. But we also need, apart from the architects, the genie civil, uh, the, uh, the engineers, the craftsmen who make things happen on the ground, from firemen to foremen. This could indeed be a way of characterizing the change of phase, the change of, of gear we need at this stage. Ladies and gentlemen, I am well aware that you all realize what is at stake. The papers presented and discussed in the previous panel demonstrate an acute awareness of what needs to be done and that it needs to be done quickly. The sense of urgency that uh, I'm sure you understand and that in fact is reflected in your work, uh, it's indeed something we want to convey to the whole societies of Europe. There is no time to waste if you want to achieve what is necessary for Europe by 2020. Uh, I'm sure that I'm probably preaching to the converted, but we also have to reach out to those who are not yet convinced. We need to go out and make the case for reform, not just in Brussels, but across Europe. And together, we need to foster a sense of ownership of the Europe 2020 strategy among all stakeholders across the Union. You were right, and it was not the greatest publicity for the launching of the process. Because uh, the crisis, it, we have to understand it, even if, as I say, with the best marketeers in the world, we could not, I mean, uh, put something uh, ahead of the financial crisis, the sovereign debt. That was, in fact, prime news, prime time news. But the fact that, in, in spite of that, the Commission kept the line that we made the partnerships uh, necessary for launching the uh, flagship initiatives, I think it's important. And now we have to communicate, and that's, of course, something where uh, organizations like yours and others that are represented here can be of first, first uh, importance. We know, need to show doubters that their other concerns are best met by embracing the objectives in China the strategy. We understand there are some concerns. We need the balance. We understand how important it is to present it this kind of competitiveness associated with growth. And of course, not any kind of growth need to have a way of not deepening social cleavages, but on the contrary, to have the necessary social consensus for those reforms. I know I can count on think tanks like Lisbon Council, which was established uh, to push for the economic and social reform in Europe, to reach out, to raise awareness, to foster debate, to make open and frank and honest debate, and make the case that there is no real uh, alternative to reform for Europe. So thank you once again for your determination, for your commitment, and let's now have the time, I hope, for some exchange of views. I thank you for your attention.